Let me know. Are, are we are we ready? Are we going? Yeah. We're rolling. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thank you for joining us, everybody. Uh, my name is Bill from General Finishes. Uh, you might hear a little background noise today. Apologize for that in advance. We are in the factory because we're going to be getting real hands-on with some product today uh, as we talk about some ways to make application easier because we get a lot of questions about what to use, when to use different applicators. You can see over here how many different brushes and pads and all kinds of different options we have. So I know I get overwhelmed going to a hardware store and having all of this to look over. I'm sure that some of you do as well, so that's what we're here to, to figure out today. So uh, before we get going on that, uh, obviously we always ask for your feedback. So if there's something that I'm talking about today and you have a question on it and I'm not elaborating enough, please tell me um, and, and we'll get right on it and answer your question as soon as we can. Uh, as well, please review our products on Facebook, on Google, uh, and make sure to check our FAQs on our website before giving us a, a call. Uh, our Facebook uh, is, is really easy to get in touch with. Uh, that's what they're there for is to help you out. So FAQs on our website, our Facebook team, uh, but we work really hard to give you the information that you need without hopefully needing to contact us too, too much. Um, that's, that's our goal is to make life easy on everybody out there. So that's why we're here today and let's, uh, let's dive into what we have going on. So uh, we're gonna talk about stains, paints, and clear coats today and what to use to apply them, how to, to apply them, how to make life easier. So uh, we're gonna start with kind of the easiest thing in our line, which would be the gel stain. Uh, everybody's pretty familiar with, uh, with oil-based stains and applying them, uh, but it's always good to start with the basics as far as application goes. And uh, I'm gonna actually remember to put on gloves today because I'm dealing with so many different products. So the easiest way to apply an oil-based stain, whether it's a gel or a, a uh, liquid oil, is you can just kind of get it on the rag and smear it on whatever you're working with. So you can see this is a piece of red oak that we're working on here. And part of the challenge that, uh, that a lot of people run into, you can see as, as uh, the red oak accepts all of that stain, eventually instead of smearing it around, it just kind of dives right in. And the, the problem that can pose is if you're not putting enough stain on, you can kind of see what I've got going over here now is a little bit of uneven color. So you end up with light areas and dark areas. So the most important thing when staining is to make sure to get enough product on there. So never ever forget that, all right? And again, oil stain, easy enough to do with a rag, no big deal here, but uh, just get enough stain on there so that it saturates the wood evenly. That's gonna give you a lot more even finish. And then you wanna make the final strokes with the grain that you are working with here. So we've still got some light areas over here. So we wanna get a little bit more. All right. So oil stain, really very simple to work with, whether it's the gel stain or the liquid oil, same kind of application technique on raw wood. Uh, now you can also use something like a foam brush to apply it. Uh, so we have these, uh, these Gen brand poly brushes here. Um, the, the overriding theme you're going to see today in poly brushes like this, the Gen brand are an example of, we don't believe in using cheap applicators or cheap product. Uh, we want you to use good applicators, good product, and give you the best results possible. So all of that goes hand in hand. If you use a, a really nice product and decide to use something real expensive like a chip brush to try and apply it, you're not going to get very good results. So everything that you see here, uh, we've got uh, brushes from our friends at Wooster. Uh, we've got some rollers from our friends at Wiz. A lot of different applicators that we're going to be talking about. But uh, all of these are really good brands to work with and, and good starting points when you're at a store. To, uh, to look for quality. So um, you, you do get what you pay for. That's the, the truth in coatings. That's the truth in your, your brushes and applicators as well, so. And Bill, we already have a question. Yep. Do you need to use wood conditioner prior to using the gel stains on raw wood? Uh, the gel stains are designed not to need a wood conditioner is the short answer to that. Uh, they're thick, so they, the thick viscosity is going to give you more consistent finish. It's not gonna blotch as much. Um, you still could use a pre-stain conditioner if you wanted to, but they're designed not to need that. So, um, so that's, that's a, a good question and keep them coming today. Uh, now, we've got the oak that we did the oil on here. Actually, before I get into water stain. So we know that there's a lot of you out there that like taking this uh, kind of golden oak color that you might have and transforming it with our gel stains. 
And there, there is kind of a, a right and a wrong way to do that. Um, again, applicators have a huge impact on that. So um, since a lot of you are familiar with our Java gel stain, we're going to start there. And again, happy I remembered my gloves today. Usually I end up going home and scrubbing the skin off my hands to get clean. So, so we've got a two inch foam brush here. And the beautiful thing about these foam brushes is they're durable enough where you can reuse them if you need to. And I already prepared this surface ahead of time. I cleaned it, I scuffed it. So we know we're in good shape there. So this is one method to get this gel stain on over an existing finish. This is not raw wood. Is to get it on there with a foam brush like this. And then what we want to do is try and even out some of these brush marks that you see, some of the streaking. And, and what's the brand of the brush that you're using? What's that? What is the brand of the brush? It's you're a using? Gen, J E N, like the name Jennifer. So it's a Gen brand poly brushes. And they're available in a, a lot of different uh, stores, um, as are the cheap ones. And, and um, you'll know the cheap ones because they just disintegrate. By now, if I was using a cheap brush, there'd be foam all over the place. So these hold their shape really nicely. And, uh, and stay intact. Now that I've got all this product on here, this is a four inch deck brush. And the reason I like these is you can see just how many bristles there are. And the natural hair is perfect for oil-based products. So that's a good rule of thumb. If you're using oil-based products, generally you want a natural hair brush, a uh, water-based, generally synthetic. So uh, because this has so much body to it, I can take and I can kind of even out that color And as I'm doing question. this, it's picking okay. up a little bit of the stain. Hey, Bill, we have one more question. Yep. Can you put the gel stains on top of chalk paint wax? Uh, no, no. On, uh, chalk paint wax is, uh, is a bear, to say the least. So um, there, there's not really a good answer for putting anything over wax uh, because wax is not made to have things stick to it. So um, good question, but no. You'd, uh, with, with chalk paint wax, generally we need to get that off of there somehow probably strip the surface and, and kind of start from fresh. So, um, But we can see where the streaks just completely disappeared. Now this brush has a little bit on there. Uh, we'll be able to clean that out. But all those, uh, those brush marks are gone. Now if you tried to do that with a foam brush, it wouldn't work. If you tried to do that with these cheap chip brushes, you can see the difference between the amount of bristles here. So again, I did that large surface pretty darn quickly with this brush and got a really nice result. So make life easy on yourself and, and get good applicators. The other thing you can do. And what is, brand of brushes are those? Um, there's, a, there's many different brands out there. Wooster makes one. Um, any hardware store is going to have it. It's a, it's a deck brush is what it's called. Oh, so uh, this particular one is a four inch. So the other thing you can do over an existing finish is just use a rag and put on a real thin coat. And this is also a really easy option. You're not going to get as much color laying down but if you have big flat surfaces and you just want a little bit of color change, that's another way to do this, okay? So we keep it nice and easy there. So you get two very different looks. This has a lot more stain on it. The darker side, it's going to take longer to dry. So anytime you have more product on, it takes longer to dry. That's a good rule of thumb. Um, we're working in, uh, in variable conditions right now in Wisconsin. We were about 50 degrees two weeks ago. Now it's about 85 with about 85% humidity. So that does affect dry times. Uh, so it's always good to keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, if it's a little bit warmer, that's going to generally accelerate your dry times. It's gonna dry faster. If it's a little bit cooler, it's gonna take longer. Humidity affects it a little bit as well. So if it's, uh, if it's more humid, it's gonna take longer to dry. So always keep that in mind when you're uh, planning your project. Michelle has a question. Mm -hmm. Can you put gel stain right over a piece that has previous stain on it? And is there anything that must be done to prep it? Um, yes, you certainly can. And that was, uh, that was what we just showed on this piece here. Uh, the short answer is absolutely. You can clean scuff without having to strip it. You can go right over the top of it. A lot of videos online to show how to do that. Um, we have a lot to cover today, so I can't get into to that particular question, but a um, ton of videos, just go to our gel stain page on our website, and there's gonna be videos on how to do that and get this kind of look right here. So, good questions, keep them coming. All right, so uh, we've talked about the gel stain. Let's get into our water-based stain a little bit, which is our bread and butter. 
Uh, now you're going to notice I don't like using rags to put on water-based stain. Reason being the water soaks right into that towel and it's really hard to get it back onto that surface. So uh, when we're talking water-based stain, generally speaking, we're going to be talking using a brush to apply it. Whether it's a foam brush or a bristle brush can be a little bit of personal preference. Uh, we generally just like the, uh, the foam brushes, keep it relatively simple here. If I can get this glove on, that'll help as well. All right, we'll go with that. So we've got this contoured surface here. We've got our Hickory water-based gel stain. And the big thing is with the water-based stain that people are not necessarily used to is you need to get enough finish on there. You need to get enough stain on there because that wood is going to soak it up, especially this piece of pine is really gonna soak up that water from the stain. And you can see as I'm brushing it out, there's less and less on this brush here. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna kind of reapply it over that entire piece. Now, if it's drying too fast, there's a couple of different things you can do. Number one, like I'm doing here, apply more stain. That's the biggest answer if it's drying too fast for you. All right, you can't use this like an oil-based stain and put it on really, really thin you're not going to get good results, especially on something that absorbs like a pine or an oak. You need to make sure to get enough material on there and really saturate that wood. All right, you can see in some of these areas it's drying a little bit, which is okay. So again, if it's drying a little bit quick, we can go back and we can apply some more stain. And it doesn't soak in nearly as fast because that water has already saturated the wood. Now the brush is going to make life a lot easier in these little intricate contours here, which are kind of a pain in the butt. And the beauty of these brushes is they do have a tapered end to them, kind of a pointy end, so you can get into those recesses and get that stain in there evenly. All right. Matthew no. asked, did you use any pre-stain conditioner on that pine piece? Uh, I did not use pre-stain conditioner on this one. Uh, again, you certainly can if you would like to. It'll give you a lighter color, but a more even color. Uh, but I would tell you that the water-based stain, uh, it, it absorbs differently than an oil-based stain. It absorbs a lot more evenly naturally. So um, I, I think you're going to see as I'm wiping this off that you're going to get a lot more consistent color with this than with this water-based stain than you will with the oil-based stain. So, um, good question. Uh, you always can use pre-stain conditioner if you want. It's really a matter of personal preference. Uh, I grew up in a house with a lot of knotty pine trim and we did not pre-stain anything. Uh, that was part of the, the character in the wood that, uh, that my mom really liked having in our house. So, um, but there are a lot of people that want a more consistent finish and that's just fine. So, no right or wrong answer to that. Devin wants to know, does water-based stain work better than gel on previously finished maple? Previously finished. Uh, they both can work on a previously finished wood is the short answer. Um, so water-based and gel can work. Uh, again, we have a lot of videos on both of those um, going over and showing you how to do that. It's a little bit different application process, but they both can work, absolutely. Uh, the beauty of the water-based stain is it's going to dry a lot faster than the gel stain will. And how does humidity affect dry time or spotting? Yeah, humidity is going to make it dry slower. Uh, that's that's going to be the biggest thing. And, and was spotting the other question? Yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's not necessarily going to affect how the stain looks, uh, but it will affect how long it, it takes for it to dry. So um, now you can see what I'm doing here. And this is a great example of where to use a chip brush. And if, if I wanted to use this brush, uh, it's got oil stain on it now, so I wouldn't do that but a natural brush is gonna be able to get into these areas and absorb some of that stain and even it out. So you're not gonna be able to get most projects done with just one applicator. You're going to need multiple brushes, multiple applicators to be able to most efficiently get that project done. So um, don't feel like you, you have to bring just a brush and that's it and you're gonna be done and, and get the best results. Um, you have to have the right tools for every job that you're doing, uh, whether that's talking about sawing wood or staining projects. So, um, always keep in mind multiple uh, multiple applicators may be necessary. Okay. Now, Bill has one more question. Yep. Any effect on how soon you wipe the excess stain off? We we had a little background noise there. Can okay. you repeat the question for me? So Bill wants to know how soon you wipe the excess stain off. 
Uh, yeah, you can wipe it off as, uh, as early as you want, especially with water-based stain because it, uh, it absorbs a lot faster into the wood. So um, with an oil-based stain, a lot of times you want to let it sit there for maybe five, 10 minutes and let it absorb in. Water-based, water soaks into wood. That's naturally what happens. So it's going to work a lot faster. You really want to get, it, get on that as far as wiping it off pretty quickly. Uh, if you let it sit there for five minutes, it's going to dry and you're not going to get great results. So um, the, the answer is get on and off of there with the, uh, with the wiping pretty darn quick. The biggest thing we run into is large surfaces with water-based stain. Uh, like I just talked about, oil-based stains kind of stay wet forever, which is a good thing, uh, but they also don't give you quite as consistent of a look in a lot of, uh, a lot of areas. So what we can do with a water-based stain, because it dries faster, we can work a lot faster, we can get multiple coats on there. I got Java gel all over the place here. All right. Um, but the challenge is when people use a water-based stain on, let's say, a piece of plywood like this or a large cabinet door. If you try and go at this with a foam brush, I mean, this is a one-inch foam brush. If you try and go at this with a two-inch foam brush, and I've seen it done, I've seen uh, professionals use a two-inch foam brush on a four-by-eight sheet, sheet of plywood, and uh, this is what it looks like. Okay, and you can see how it's already soaking in a little bit. Okay, so I want to go back, get a little bit more. You're not going to be able to work fast enough. So this is where using the right applicator for the right job really comes in handy. Because this, if, if this was a four by eight sheet of plywood, you can imagine uh, how much more difficult this would be. So a couple different options. Number one, you could spray this if you wanted to. And spraying, it's really easy. You just need to, uh, to get the product down. We're gonna go more into spraying a little bit later with paints and top coats. Um, but the thing is, you just wanna get that product on fast. So again, let's talk about different tools to use. This is gonna be a pad applicator. So this is available in hardware stores. They have different versions of them, but you can see the amount of foam backing in here. It's gonna hold just a ton of material in there. So we do wanna make sure what I've done already is I've wet this and I've kind of brushed it off because these little uh, fibers in here sometimes can get loose and get into your finish. But what you're gonna see here and again, we've got a video online showing an entire tabletop that we were able to stain. And we were able to get the stain down on that tabletop in about 15 to 20 seconds. Now, you can see I haven't reloaded this at all. And I've still got stain coming out. I mean, there's still plenty of it in there. So this is going to be the biggest trick with the water-based stain, is get it down relatively quickly. And to the question a, a few minutes ago about how long to wait to wipe it off, I'm in, uh, I'm in good shape to wipe it off right now. We don't need to let it sit any more than that. So now again, as far as wiping off goes, don't go and use dollar store paper towels. They don't absorb enough. Um, I have a cloth uh, that's a lint-free cloth here. This works really well. Um, or these are similar to blue shop towels where they're nice and absorbent. Um, either one is fine. But again, use something that's going to absorb water. Don't go with your dollar store paper towels. It's not going to be very successful. And again, we're going to work with the grain on this. And working with the grain is going to help us eliminate our wiping marks. Because if I go like that, you can see it doesn't look great at all. And that's going to be the case with any stain. So we want to try and keep this as flat as possible here so we don't have too many pressure points. And I'm just real lightly going over this, not pressing too hard. I'm just trying to get all the excess water and stain off of here. All right. So again, right tools for the right job. Good cloths, good applicator. These applicator pads are, are key for large surfaces with water-based stain. So um, that makes life a lot easier. If I was doing a cabinet with a side like this, I would probably have some of these and maybe some, uh, some brushes, a nice natural bristle brush to get into some of the corners and feather it out. So uh, multiple tools for the job to, to make sure it's successful here. All right. The other thing you can use, and I'm, I'm not necessarily going to show this right now, you can use a roller as well. So um, this is, uh, these are woven rollers. Uh, the reason we like woven rollers is they're not going to fall apart and leave lint all over the place. So uh, this is the, the Worcester Pro Do Z roller, and you can get it in different naps. Um, again, the concept here is different. You have different naps, different lengths. Um, the concept here is just get the stain down relatively quickly. However easy 
the, the easiest way to do that is. So if it's a roller, if it's a pad applicator, uh, if it's a foam brush on smaller pieces, that's great. So uh, make sure that the, the applicator kind of matches the size project that you're working on. You could even use a bristle brush if you wanted to. Um, not necessarily what I use, but if you have it laying around and, and you wanted to use it, that's just fine. So um, again, get enough stain down, get it down quickly, and we're gonna be successful. All right. All right, keep the questions coming. Trying to make room here. I have a lot of stuff back here, so I'm kind of making a mess of my work area, but that's okay. All right, so now that we've got the staining figured out, uh, let's move on to the paint, and, and this is where making a decision on brushes becomes really important. So um, just looking over here, first of all, we're not gonna use foam brushes for paint. That, that we can get rid of the foam brushes. Reason being, I've got some, uh, some blue moon here that I'm going to show you. Some of our milk paint. So if I decide I wanna use this on here, it's really not going to pick up enough material and lay it back down to be successful. If you're doing a small touch up, that's one thing. Uh, but if I'm trying to use, say a two inch foam brush on here, what's gonna end up happening is that some of it will soak in, but it just kind of smears it around more than anything. So I'm not saying that you can't be successful. And, and what I'm telling you, a lot of these things are, are kind of rules of thumb where could you get away with doing this and be happy with it? Sure, that maybe, but to get it smooth, it's a real challenge with this because you're just not putting down enough material. So that's where using a nice soft tip brush comes in. So um, Wooster makes a bunch of different lines and I'm gonna show you three different brushes here that are really good kind of DIY brushes. The thing you see with brushes is there's firm tips and soft tips. Okay. Generally speaking, your firm tip, uh, which is what this gold edge is, uh, is going to be for professionals when they're getting edges and they need control. And generally speaking, a soft tip like these silver tip brushes, which are great for DIYers, are going to be better for feathering out and giving you a smoother finish. Okay. So um, this, uh, this Ultra Pro Soft uh, is Worcester's version of a contractor brush, but it still has a nice soft tip to it. And you can see the differences in uh, handles and the handle length. I mean, there's so many different options as, as far as what to use. Um, a lot of times, again, it takes multiple different brushes to get the job done right. Uh, but overall, the, the silver tips are one of my personal favorites and, and I highly recommend them. So on this piece that we're working with here, again, you can see how much better that applies, I didn't do anything with the bottom here, but this is applying a lot more paint, a lot more smoothly than what a foam brush does. So Karen has a question. Mm -hmm. I have a bench that has been chalk painted and waxed. Oh, a wax like, question. <laughs> but would like to redo it with GF paint. Do mm -hmm. I have to sand it down, down to wood first? Yeah, you have to get that wax off of there. Uh, trying to paint over wax is, is a recipe for disaster. So um, you have to try and strip that wax off of there, which can be a little bit of a challenge, whether it's sanding or using a chemical stripper. Personally, I would go with a chemical stripper because sanding it, a lot of times you can just kind of heat it up and bury it back into the wood. So um, you need to try and strip that wax off of there. But I mean, you can see just uh, with this brush here, you get a nice even application. Uh, that's going to flow and level out beautifully and you get a lot more paint than what we had here with the foam brush. So um, really, really good. The, the silver tip brushes are going to be perfect for this. Okay. All right. Now, when we get into something like a table leg, like what we have here, these brushes can work very well also. So you can get a nice even coating on there. Challenge can be as you can see, when I press down, it kind of separates that brush in some areas. So if, if you do a lot of furniture painting uh, and, and there's a lot of retailers out there that, uh, that use the milk paint that do a lot of these kind of uh, legs and, and table backs and, or chair backs where they have a lot of contours, that's where something like, uh, this is a chalk paint brush and this is a synthetic brush because again, synthetic bristles are going to give us better results with water base than natural bristles. Uh, so, this is uh, 
gonna work a lot better on our contours because when we press down, you can see it doesn't separate nearly as much. Um, we have another question about wax. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Aaron wants to know, can you use thinner to remove the wax? Oh, removing wax is a, a bit of a bear. Um, thinner may do it. Um, yeah, the, you're, you're gonna wanna use some sort of a chemical to get it off of there. Uh, thinner or acetone may cut it, but it can also depend on the wax. You need a solvent that's harsh enough to, to cut through that. So uh, I don't have a really good answer for you. What I would try uh, would be denatured alcohol first, and then after that, maybe some acetone, since that's a, a little bit more aggressive. Uh, and then after that, it may take some sort of a chemical stripper. Quite honestly, I would probably go with the chemical stripper to start with and, uh, and just get it all off of there. So. so again, you can see how this round brush really works into these contours nicely without losing its shape and allows us to keep a lot of paint in there. So these are specialty brushes. You might have to look a little bit for them. Sometimes hardware stores don't have something quite like this. But you can see the great advantage on working with something that's contoured like that. As opposed to, again, this brush kind of splits and separates around it. This one doesn't do that nearly as much. Okay. Devin has a question. Yep. He says, I have many tiny dental molding details on my dresser. Mm -hmm. How do I keep paint from loading up in those tight little spaces too much? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of recesses to deal with is, is what we're talking about here. So um, let's see what we've got here. Doors hiding all over the place. So kind of moldings like this, this kind of detail. Uh, that's where, again, having the right brush helps. So uh, this, this silver tip is going to do a really nice job getting in there. But sometimes that softer bristle, if you're not quite as experienced with it, can leave a little bit too much product. Uh, so it depends on exactly how much of that you have. But again, this, uh, this little bit firmer round brush might give you a little better success because that firmer brush is going to give you a little more control in those areas. So, And as far as not getting drips and runs, you have to find that balance of applying it with the right brush and not applying too much product and not also leaving, not, not getting enough product on there. So you have to find that Goldilocks zone of enough product down, but, uh, but not having to take eight coats to cover it, obviously. So, um, so a, lot of, a lot of different options here. Now, you could also use these pad applicators for paint. Um, when it comes to furniture painting, when you have a lot of, of shapes and contours like this, not ideal. These are really designed for edging when it comes to walls, but it is another option if you have large flat surfaces. Uh, but the other thing that you can use would be a roller. And the milk paint rolls out beautifully. So I'm gonna try not to make too much more of a mess of my workspace here. All right. So again, we go back to our rollers here and we have a few different kinds of rollers. So um, we have this, uh, this Produce Z that works very well. This is a 3 8 inch nap. Uh, now we also have a mohair blend that is a quarter inch nap. So generally speaking, the shorter the nap, uh, the less paint is, is going to absorb into that, uh, that nap that you have there into that roller. So that means you're gonna to have to go back and forth more to get the same amount of product down. But the shorter nap is also gonna give you a nice smooth surface. So uh, there's always a little bit of, uh, of give and take between the two. So normally you're going to use a paint pad or a, a paint tray, and I am just breaking all of the rules here and dipping straight into the can, just to give you an idea here. But this is gonna be a nice uniform application on a large surface. And the thing is, you don't wanna overwork it. Uh, you don't wanna try and press too hard and get too many bubbles into it or anything like that. So you wanna get the paint down and let it do its thing. All right, and then we just kinda of take a light pass over it and then we're gonna let that flow and level on its own. Now. It is gonna be a challenge, whether you're brushing or rolling, you can get a finish that is very, very good, but if you are very particular and you want a sprayed finish, that can be a little bit more of a challenge. I'm about to make a mess here. 
All right, there we go. So just to give you an example, this is the little shorter nap roller here. And you can see that leaves less of those imperfections than that 3 8 inch does. This is a little smoother finish here. And hopefully you can see that on the camera and get the idea between the 3 8 snap and then the, the shorter, I think this is a quarter inch nap, yeah. So um, shorter nap, you're gonna get a smoother finish, but you're gonna have to, uh, to work to apply that by dipping more and going back and forth more. So options, and there's no right or wrong to any of this. Whatever you're comfortable with is, is the answer to most of it. So um, like I say, on a kitchen project, you probably need some rollers, you need some brushes, you need a lot of different things to make it work and, and be as efficient as you can be. Now, the fun part that uh, if, if I was doing a kitchen I would look into would be spraying. And, and as a DIYer, um, I, I had to convert uh, my sister who does a lot of painting of, of her own personal projects and she finds brushing therapeutic and that's fantastic. But if I'm doing a whole kitchen, uh, brushing is gonna take a lot of time. Something like this sprayer right here is kind of a, a very basic uh, beginner sprayer, and this is a Home Right Finish Max Super. Uh, this sprayer right here, uh, they sell several different versions of it. You can get it for under $100, or they sell some versions that are a little bit more than that, uh, that, that give you more options. But uh, for a $100 sprayer, this is going to save you so much time and energy if you're doing a lot of finishing or any sort of a large project. If I was doing a kitchen, um, I would highly recommend at least looking at something like this uh, and, and if you're not comfortable with it, you need to, to play around with it, but it's gonna be well worth your time. So what we always do is we wanna test on a surface first. So uh, this sprayer, when you pull the trigger, you can hear it, it goes on and off on its own, which is great. Uh, and I'm gonna try not to drive Michaela on the camera too crazy here by turning it on and off too much, uh, cause she has to adjust the volume so I don't blow everybody's eardrums out. So uh, bear with us here. But, this, uh, this setting here, essentially what happens is we have fluid that comes out of the tip. She's still messing with the volume there. <laughs> we dialed in, we're good? All right. So essentially what happens is the fluid comes out of the tip and there's this little air cap on here. And I'm gonna take this apart to show you. So air goes into these little portholes here and it comes out of here and it turns this stream into a fan pattern. Right. Now, it's air pushing through there that does that, and it allows us to get a nice smooth finish. Now, this particular gun, when you have it like this, when you have this air cap like this, the fan pattern is going to be up and down. If I was to put it diagonally, like this, it would be a round fan pattern. And if I was to put it like this, it would be a fan pattern this way. So if I have a fan pattern this way, I want to spray up and down. If I go side to side with a fan pattern this way, I'm gonna end up with a lot of paint in a really small area. If I have a fan pattern up and down, I wanna spray side to side. So you're always working perpendicular to the fan pattern, right? And then the round version would be really nice if again, we're working on our table legs like this or if we're working on chair rungs, we need a real fine mist uh, that, that's a real small circle. The, this would be perfect for a job like this. So I'm always gonna test on cardboard first and uh, and what I'm gonna show you is, first of all, the, the only adjustment this really has, it's got the tip adjustment, and then it has this dial on the side for the amount of product that comes out. So this is a pretty basic unit. You need to dial in how much product is coming out and what direction you're spraying, and away you go. So first what I'm gonna show you is how much product is coming out, and kind of what we're looking for is just enough product to cover this cardboard, but not have it dripping and running all over the place, all right? And then once we get it tested on here and happy with it, I'm gonna show you how to do that on a, uh, on a door here. All right, you got the volume down? All right. Okay.
go. to show how I did that side there. All right, we have volume back on here. Okay, so you can see if you have a whole kitchen to do, that is a whole lot faster than brushing every single door and drawer front. So. Doors and drawers come out of the kitchen very easily. You can do this in your garage. Uh, it'll make a little bit of a mess, so maybe you do it out in the, uh, out in the driveway when it's a nice day. Uh, but this is going to make life so much faster and easier, and you get a much better finish. Uh, one of the challenges when you brush is if you're not the, the best at brushing or if you're kind of new to it, you have to do so many coats to try and get coverage because maybe you're not putting enough paint on, or if you put too much on, it gets gloppy. This eliminates a lot of that and gives you a nice, smooth finish. So um, again, if you're doing a lot of uh, furniture refinishing or, uh, or if you have a large project coming up for $100 or under, this is something that you really need to look into. Right. Uh, Janella wants to know, mm -hmm. is it full strength milk paint in the sprayer? Yeah, this is full strength milk paint, absolutely. And this, uh, they do have different tip sizes. So this was a 2.0 tip, uh, but I didn't do anything to the milk paint, just sprayed it right out of there and, uh, and got a pretty darn good finish with it. So. Um, I mean, that's, we've got a fan running here and this is already drying in some areas, which is great. So I'm guessing within about 10 minutes, it's gonna be dry to the touch. Okay. Keep the questions coming today. Um, Appreciate what it. What lower cost sprayer do you recommend to get beginning sprayers started? Uh, this is about the lowest cost that's out there. This, these are, the low, low end is like $50. Um, you kinda, these run anywhere from 50 to like $200, this different versions of this. Uh, I'm going to talk about clear coats in a second, and you, you kind of move up to this unit when you get to the next step. Um, this would be about a $300, $350 unit. Um, again, it depends on how much finishing you're doing. If I was spending 100 bucks on a sprayer, this is going to pay for itself in the amount of time you save. There's no question about it. So um, this, this unit right here is a really good entry-level unit. But for $350 for one project, that might not make the most sense to you. But if you have a lot of projects going on, then this, this is something to consider as well because this is kind of a, the next step up and going to give you a better finish. So um, there's going to be a, a lot of information online about that. Uh, also, next week, we're going to be doing a uh, Facebook Live, same time, same place, on spraying for professionals. So this is more DIY geared today. Next week is going to be more geared for professionals. And uh, we're going to give you a lot more detail on spraying at that point with, uh, with even more units than just what these are, because these are just, again, the basic entry level ones. What was the first sprayer brand you mentioned? Uh, this is uh, a Home Right Finish Max Super. Uh, they, again, have uh, just a nice entry level unit. Uh, the, this is another version of that, kind of a, a little different, but same kind of concept where you're talking about uh, 80 or 100 bucks or so. Uh, and, and essentially, they're just good, basic beginner units. So uh, not too many options, not too many frills, but they work perfect for what we're talking about today. And do the top coats go in the sprayer? Yes, and uh, in, a, in a couple of minutes, we're gonna talk about spraying top coats with the Earl X right here. So very good question. The top coats do go in the sprayer, yes. All right, so feeding into top coats, that's, uh, that's where we're gonna go next. So. You know what, I've got our water-based top coat here, but I'm going to set that off to the side for just a second because I want to talk about our gel top coat and our armor seal. So if I can have, uh, we've got Mark, one of our salespeople uh, hanging out in the back there. If he can grab me a, a gel top coat from the shelf, that would be fantastic. Appreciate that, Mark. All right, so we've got our armor seal satin and I'm using my very professional stir stick here as my handle of my uh, foam brush just to make sure that everything is all stirred up. Always a good idea to stir up any product whenever you're using it. So Armor Seal we've made for a long, long time. This is a wiping varnish. So again, use the right applicator for the products that you're working with. 
Mark's a little camera shy. We won't let him get on there. <laughs> so with the armor seal being a wiping varnish, what it's designed for is to take a rag, and I've given up on gloves at this point. Just gonna scrub my hands later. It's made to go on in real thin coats using a rag or a cloth. Now, like I mentioned before, does this mean that it's the only way to apply it? No. Um, we do have some people that spray it, even though it makes a mess, uh, because oil-based stuff, when you spray it, makes just a sticky mess all over the place. But uh, some people have the, the shop to be able to do that. Other people will brush it on. That's fine. It's not necessarily what it's designed for, but you can be successful. This is how it's designed. Wipe on in thin coats just like that. Right? Um, keep things simple. That, that's the idea here. And with uh, about three to four coats, you're going to get a very, very hard, durable, classic protected finish. Away you go. So um, this is the, one of the easiest products we have as far as application goes. And if you were to apply that with a foam brush, again, that's fine. Now our gel top coat, we have a, a little bit different story with the gel top coat. Again, you can apply this with a brush, but the gel top coat, as you can see, is very thick. It's kind of uh, almost like Vaseline, and that's what it's designed to be. The reason for that is on vertical surfaces, it's not going to drip and run all over the place. It also works really well on contours. So again, designed to be a wipe on finish. So I'm going to take my rag here, and you can see just how thick that is. It just stays right in place there. Now you can imagine if I wipe that on or, or brush it on with a brush and leave those brush marks in there, it's not going to flow and level out. It's too thick. But with a piece like this where I've got contours, it's kind of a challenge to get in there and get what we need to in those recesses. So again, this is where using a combination of applicators comes in handy. So our chip brushes that are just the, the really cheap chip brushes are perfect for being able to get some of this gel top coat in those recesses evenly. Do you need to stir that? Yep, always a good idea to stir everything, absolutely. Mark was kind enough to stir it for me before he gave it to me. All right, so again, wipe on varnish, very easy to use, and you have a couple of different applicators to do that. Now, the, the beauty of these oil-based finishes is when you get something like a butcher block countertop. And I want to thank, we've got some friends at Hardwood Reflections, that's uh, the brand of countertop that we're talking about here. This is a walnut countertop. And the beauty of this, with the oil base, with a nice wood like walnut, is look at the color that comes out of there. All right. And as far as applying it on a large surface goes, again, we're just applying a real thin coat with this. So wiping this gel top coat on here is just fine. And because it's an oil-based product, it stays wetter for longer. Now, if you wanted to, you could take one of your foam brushes, and unfortunately, I've got a tiny can here, so I'm using a one-inch foam brush on a large project. So please don't... Uh, don't shoot me too much on the comments section here because this is not how we draw it up, but you're still going to get the idea of getting that product down and being able to wipe out the excess. So again, get enough product on there and then wipe it out. And you can see the beauty in that wood. And this is why the oil-based stains shine, especially on something like walnut or on cherry, where it just brings out that natural depth and color. Okay. You get nice long strokes on a large surface, always going with the grain. We get a nice easy surface to, uh, to finish off there. Okay. And again, raw wood here, finished wood here. And uh, that walnut countertop is absolutely beautiful with an oil-based product on it. Okay. Tip it up a little bit more. There. Give that a shot. So again, large surfaces, oil-based products, just wipe it on in real thin coats. That's the, the best way to do it. Whether it's the armor seal or the gel top coat, both designed to, to be applied in the same way. Wipe on thin coats. All right, okay. Put that off to the side now. 
Back to our water-based products, which is obviously our, our bread and butter. So I've got, uh, I've got high performance satin in this tray right here. And much like the paint, we've got some different options for how to apply our water-based products and the top coats. So uh, first of all, we've got uh, something flat here like a drawer front. Now this has a couple of different areas to it. It's got some flat areas and it has some of these recessed contours. So again, this is where two different brushes may come in handy. Patty asks, can you use it over stained surfaces? Uh, the high performance goes over stain or over paint. Um, I don't want to go too deep into the white conversation, but um, look at our website for, for going with clear coats over whites, and then it'll give you lots of information on that. But uh, yes, over paint and over stain, is, uh, the, the high performance is going to be perfect for that. So on a nice flat surface like this, that foam brush is a nice option. If you try and get into some of these recessed areas, it gets a little bit more challenging, where you can still do it, but what might become a little bit easier there would be our one inch silver tip brush. Now I wouldn't want to use a two inch brush here because that's way too much brush for the area that we're working on. So again, the right brush size for the area. If I was to use the, the two inch brush, you could see how much coverage that gets. I'm going to end up with marks all on the inside and that's not what we want. So use the right brush size for the area that you are working on. Is it self leveling? It is self leveling. Absolutely. So the biggest thing with the water base is uh, you just want to get it down relatively quickly and you don't want to overwork it. Um, so again, the, you, you need to get the right amount of product on there and you kind of want a little bit of that blue cast uh, that you can see. Now I'm painting on blue, so it's not a great example, but hopefully you still see a little bit of that in the camera. Uh, when I spray on black in a second, you'll see more of it. But you just want to work relatively quickly and you don't want to get so much on there that it drips and runs, but you also don't want to put too little on there because then it, you're going to have to do 10 coats and that's just a waste of time. So again, that Goldilocks zone of you want to put on just enough where if I was to run my finger through it, you could see that. Uh, and it's going to stay wet for about 10 minutes or so. That's, that's kind of the magic number in there. Okay. What's the trick for vertical surfaces to avoid dripping? The trick to avoid dripping on vertical surfaces is don't put too much product on. So uh, these products are designed to go on in about uh, three to five wet mill thickness. And what that means is three to five thousandths of an inch thick. Um, you're thinking to yourself, oh, how do I know what three to five thousandths of an inch looks like? Um, it's, it's that bluish hue that uh, when we're spraying, I'll, I'll touch base on that a touch more. But um, if you put it on with too little, it's not going to build, it's, it's not going to flow out right. Put it on too much, it's going to drip and run all over. So you, you do have to work into that happy medium. All right. Now, let's see, we've got a large piece to, to use the top coat on here. So same concept as before when we were talking about stain. Remember I was telling everybody, you know, it, it's really hard to stain a large surface with a two inch foam brush. Same concept here with the top coat. So, if I was doing a tabletop or, or something along these lines, if I try and do it with a two inch foam brush, I'm going to fail miserably. And I've seen it before. I've seen customers where they take one dip of the brush and they go like this all the way across the four foot piece that they're working on. And then they'll maybe touch up a little bit back here and then they'll take the brush, dip it again and go all the way back across the other way. We need to get the right amount of product on there and that's not the right way to do it, okay? Um, so, we have this pad applicator and the nice thing about this, this is a, a Sureline pad applicator. This actually pivots, so you can do uh, some different angles with that so it makes it a little easier if you're working on a large surface. Uh, and again, this is a floor pad applicator is what they're designed for. Uh, I find this in, in any hardware store where brushes are sold, kind of in that same aisle. So we want to get enough product on there. And remember we were talking about that bluish hue a second ago. And that's kind of what we're talking about there. So we don't want too much of that blue, but we do want just a little bit of it. 
And you can see I'm not having to reload this brush a whole lot either, or this, this pad, if you will. So I get the product down, and then I'm just real lightly going back over it with one final pass to kind of even it out. And away we go. Okay? So again, the right size applicator for the right surface. You're not going to be able to do a surface that large very quickly if you're using a, a foam brush. or I don't care if it's a four, four inch foam brush, it doesn't hold enough material. That took me, what, 10 seconds to do, maybe 15 seconds. Uh, so if you're doing a tabletop and you're spending five minutes doing the top, that's too much time. Use a, a, the right size applicator like this. This is, again, a six inch pad applicator. They make them in different sizes. Uh, this is an eight inch here. so. A lot of different options for these. Um, these little uh, fibers on the end, sometimes you need to kind of clean it off first so you don't get fibers going off into the, uh, into the film. So always good to kind of wet it down, rub all the fibers off of there and make sure that all that dust and, and uh, any loose fibers on there come off. So pad applicators are a great way to do it and that's gonna give us a nice smooth surface. And I, I hope that in the light maybe you can kind of see there's really not many uh, brush strokes or anything like that that's flowing and leveling really smoothly for us. Bill, what's your favorite applicator? That depends on the job. The, what My favorite applicator really depends on the job. I guess if I had to choose one, it would probably be spraying. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate that, uh, and, and again, you'll see next week uh, when, uh, when Tom takes over the reins and gets off of his book signing tour that uh, he's going to be spraying in our spray booth here. And uh, it's an eight by 10 spray booth. We're really fortunate to have it. And we have all kinds of different sprayers here. Um, that, that's that's a, a great thing for us to be able to use. And I know not everybody has that. So if you don't have a sprayer to use, uh, then it depends on the project. I think these pad applicators don't get used enough and they're really not that expensive. If you have a large surface. Which you, pad applicator do you prefer? Uh, which, which pad, pad applicator? applicator? This is the Sureline brand. Uh, this one works very well. Uh, I'm not necessarily partial to any of them, but uh, this one's pretty easy to find. Uh, I think um, at, at a lot of paint stores, you'll find them as deck stain applicators. So sometimes you'll find the deck stain brands have their own and, and that's just fine. So uh, they all do a really nice job. And Jen wants to know, do you use a new applicator for every coat in between or can you reuse it? Yeah, these are reusable to, to a certain extent. So you can rinse these out and, uh, and, and reuse them absolutely. And then there's no problem with that. So. Uh, with any of these brushes, they, they, for the most part, can be reused except for chip brushes. Um, but they, you can definitely reuse these and, uh, and get a good life out of them. And then they also sell, I mean, this just slides off of here. And maybe my, uh, my other pad will show a little bit better. See, this just kind of slides off of here. The handle does. Maybe. Maybe not. With a lot of force, that slides off of there. And, uh, and you can replace this pad. So the, the handle is... Uh, is reusable. Okay, so then the uh, the last thing to talk about with the top coats would uh, would be spraying. And again, when it comes to doing large projects or surfaces with a lot of contours, uh, or if you're doing a lot of finishing, uh, if you don't have a sprayer, you need to look at getting one. And I know for some of you, uh, brushing can be therapeutic. Uh, spraying can be just as therapeutic and save you a lot of time, trust me. So uh, this again is, uh, is the, the Erlex, it's what they call the 5500. Same basic features as before. So um, essentially what we have is a spray gun, fluid comes out of the end of it. We have this tip that, uh, that you can rotate and get different fan patterns with, same as the, the other gun that we were using. So right now it's a fan pattern like this, so you'd spray side to side. Uh, if you go diagonal, it's a round fan pattern. And then if you go like this, it's a horizontal, so you spray up and down. So um, instead of it being all self-contained, this hose comes off. This is basically a, a glorified vacuum motor, if you will. So it sprays air into here. And this canister down here has all the fluid in it. Uh, this little knob right here controls how much fluid comes out. So uh, I can take this, and right now I can't pull the trigger at all or I can open it up. So if I have thicker product, it pulls a lot more than that. And you can see the other unit, it's an on and off by the pull of the trigger. Uh, this one, there's actually a, a little red switch hiding down here, and that's our on off switch here. So a uh, little, uh, little finer unit here. Uh, it's not all self-contained like the other one is. You have this, uh, this motor, but this, 
This hose is like 15 feet long, so you can do a lot of different things with it. Uh, so I'm going to spray this right here, and especially on this black piece, you're going to see that bluish tint that we're talking about that we're looking for for the right amount of product. Um, and uh, we'll get going here. So. I'm going to go ahead and intentionally ruin this for you just to show you that you can, uh, you can draw a letter or whatever you want in there. And you can see how it's not dripping and running all over the place. Got a little bit heavy in this area up here. Uh, so that would be kind of a, an area of concern if I had that all over the place. But uh, this, this kind of light blue hue over everything is what we're looking for. And that is going to dry clear. So. Again, spraying it's going to be a whole lot faster and a whole lot more even than doing any kind of hand application will be. Okay. Do we have any more questions coming from anybody out there? We're all good for now? Okay. Well, well uh, while I'm sure some of you get the last questions in, I want to thank everybody for coming out today. Hopefully you learned a little bit of, uh, of how to use the right tools uh, for applying stains and paints and top coats. Again, view our FAQs on our website. Uh, we're constantly updating our website and trying to give you the best, most accurate information that we can on our products and on things like this on how to apply products. So um, any feedback is always appreciated on uh, Facebook, and we appreciate you watching. Uh, next week, we'll be doing spraying for professionals. And uh, as always, we appreciate reviews, uh, Facebook, Google, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next week. So thanks for stopping in.